BeastNet podcast, sponsored in part by James Safety Services, OCR Buddy, and supported by the fitness community. Here we discuss all things fitness related, running, rucking, mental health and preparedness, and of course, obstacle course racing. Welcome to the BeastNet. Hey everybody out there in BeastNet land. Today got Brother Boggs, I'm talking with map and dingo dominguez and we got pretty mike he's uh he's joining us from his car on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere we're going to talk about their their new endurance project that they've got first let's talk to map map who are you well i'm 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 me i think or i like i like to be at least uh this is jerry map dominguez uh, my brother and i started this venture uh called the endurance event plain and simple a little bit about myself then a little bit, I suppose. Uh, I do have a military and law enforcement background. Uh, I spent 12 years in the Marine Corps. Um, did a lot of a lot of different things. Most uh, most Marines end up spending five years, four years, doing one particular specialty. I had an an opportunity to jump around and do a lot of different things. Uh, when most people say, you know, what was your MOS? I have to pause for a moment. And I, well, I have five of them. Uh, you know being a marksmanship instructor to SRT with PMO to, you know, an armor to a Marine guard on a carrier and, and so on and so forth. That's one of the aspects that I bring to the table for, for this type of uh, event that we're starting. The other side is uh, law enforcement. I, I was a reserve deputy sheriff for a while and I learned a lot from that and decided that wasn't where I wanted to go. And later on, I became a, uh, a federal uh, law enforcement instructor. And so teaching law enforcement aspects, and that's where I get the, the whole idea of scenario based uh, comes from. And I, I think uh, bringing those aspects to the table to uh, teach people to one, get out of their comfort zone and two, there, there, there is a solution and nine times out of 10, there's a hundred different solutions that bring you to the same uh, problem solving answer. This is awesome. See, and I, I know, like I said before, I know Dingo pretty well. I, we've done a few events together um in fact my nickname pretty mike came from dingo so dingo is the one that gave me that during an event where he the whole event we were pretty much partners and that's what he called me the entire event and it's stuck ever since and that was wow wow i'm five I'm, years ago yeah what yeah, i was about to say ago. who who gave you that 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 terrible name and of course that would be that jackass dingo <laughs> dingo gave me the pretty mike nickname so that's awesome brother yeah. that's awesome so dingo a little about you I mean, we've had you, you know, on here before, but it was a long time ago. Right. Um, so a little bit about me. If, if you've done an event with me prior to, I kind of skipped over myself. I'd always introduce my my counterparts and what they do. So uh, this kind of in this platform, this will give me an opportunity to tell a lot of people that have never gotten the opportunity to get to know myself or my brother, Map, as far as behind the scenes and who we are. So again, going off of what Map said, uh, I also have a uh, law enforcement and, and uh, military background. Him and I have lived very unique lives in that dealing with both of these two different communities in that I've spent 12 years in the Marine Corps, uh, two years in the Army, and then 13 years in the Navy. So I have over 27 years in the military. Uh, while I was in the Navy and working in the Army as well, I actually got a position as a federal agent with the Department of Homeland Security. So I was doing that for, for 15 years as well. And so during the during this whole period, uh, again, for 15 years paralleling military and law enforcement, uh, I was able to gain a lot of uh, uh, knowledge as far as, you know, I've been to SWAT schools, I've been to different types of military schools, um, breaching schools, all kinds of different things. And even though my brother and I never really are, you know, we don't stand up and say, oh, we're, you know, special operations and like that. The nice part about what him and I have done is throughout our careers is that we've kind of geared ourselves toward those types of environments, for lack of better terms. You know, my brother said he, he was on an SRT team. Uh, I've worked and actually taught at a SWAT school. You know, I used to teach urban warfare instructor, or rather, I used to be an urban warfare instructor. I used to teach uh, urban warfare training to Marines, uh, helicopter rope suspension training instructor. So again, my brother and I have both lived a unique life as far as in the military, in that if you ask us what our military occupation is or MOS, we really 
can't just say, oh, well, you know, I spent my whole time in the infantry. Well, that's not actually our story. Our story is just very lucky. I mean, we were in the right places to do the right things and, and, and have a great time. I mean, if you've ever done an event with me and Mike, you have, and you've heard me explain yeah. to you that, you know, I've had the opportunity. I'm not, I'm not an Navy SEAL at all whatsoever. I'm not even close to even thinking I'd be one, but to have the opportunity to do two combat deployments in support of them and utilizing the skills that I've, that I've learned to support them. Now, talking about this, how does that relate to us teaching endurance events? My goodness, my brother and I, if you were to, you've seen us, Don, I'm not sure if you actually been, you know, in our, you know, we've been in your presence or seen you at an event. We're not the tallest guys. In fact, in any, in any, in any, in any time we step into the room, we're probably the shortest guys in the room. We have the loudest voices. We have the biggest egos. And we have the largest, largest freaking inspiration in our hearts that you've ever seen in anybody. When we step into a scene or we go somewhere, we just want to motivate everybody. So that's the type of big persons that my brother and I are. So again, how does this relate toward uh, endurance events and stuff like that? We love taking people and pushing them beyond their limits showing them that, you know, and I'll coin a phrase from an awesome guy that we both know, we love working with is that that's Kuehl Cha in that, you know, he does, we don't want to just show you that you're better. We want you to know that you're better than who you are. And I love how he coined that phrase. And so uh, stealing that from him, understand that by coming to one of our events, we're going to push you, we're going to test you. The nerve wracking part for others that look on the outside, as Mike would say, hey, you know, what would I expect? We have a lot of people that really, really want to do endurance events, but it's the mental hang up they have. And that is, well, am I strong enough? I got to run more. Maybe I should work out to work up to this or constantly have this self doubt as far as maybe I'm not good enough. Because Ingo, may, may I interject one thing? Yeah, go ahead. One of the biggest things, uh, Don, Mike, that I hear all the time, and, and it resonates with me because of a phrase that, that uh, Navy personnel used to say to me, let me get training first before I go to your training. I, I never understood that. Uh, being a Marine, I'm a Marine, and I, I like Navy and, and, and soldiers and everybody, but one of the biggest things that irritates me is when they go, well, I was going to join the Marine Corps. And the first thing in my head is, well, what stopped you? What what stopped you from going? So when I tell people, hey, come out and do this, they go, oh, well, I got to start training first. Well, you know, what, what are you doing? You are, you are hog tying yourself to that, to that, to that pin in the ground that you will go nowhere. So yeah, it, it, just like Dingo saying, you know, hey, got, you got to get off, get off the pot, damn it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, finishing the point that I was saying was that we, you, we've got individuals that would love to come out. They, they just want to cross that line. They want to get in there. They want to participate, but all of a sudden doubt seeps in, seeps in and they go, well, I want to be the slowest one out there. I don't want to be the weakest one out there, or I'll just hold everybody back. That's absolute nonsense. So the reason our tagline is specifically put your training to the test is we have a gamut of people out. You're running, you're rucking, you're, you're doing the virtual events, you're, you're doing virtual obstacle courses and all this other good stuff. You've got your own backyard ninja and all this other stuff. That's great. The question is, how do you know you're getting better at what you're doing? Are you stronger? Are you faster? Are you mentally prepared to endure? Because that's what it is. If you're running 100 yards, guess what? You're enduring for 100 yards. You're putting it all out there. If you're running 50K, you're going to endure 50K. That's the point we're trying to make. And that's what we're driving. That's what's driving our event is that we want to show you that your training may still need to develop. And hell, you ask my brother and I, we'll tell you every day. We're constantly ready but constantly preparing to be ready. We're working out, we're doing our runs, we're lifting weights, we're doing obstacles, we're throwing cement balls around. We're doing whatever we can to be ready. One of the things that somebody asked me, and this relates to, to, to 
how my brother and I look at endurance, people ask me, you know, why did you join the military? Or why do you do what you do? Well, the reason being is, and again, this may go into a serious note, and I'm not trying to bring, I'm not trying to bring the, 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 the conversation down, yeah, but, it's specifically, but it's specifically this. With the knowledge that I've gained and the training that I have, I will gladly go so that someone's mother, father, daughter, cousin, brother, uncle, dad, whomever doesn't have to go. I'll fill that seat because I know I'm ready. I know I'm prepared and I know I'm trained. So with that being said, we want people to understand that come out to our events. It doesn't matter what physical stature you are. It doesn't matter how much training you have or have not. It doesn't matter whether you can run one mile or 10 miles. What matters is, are you mentally prepared and do you have enough heart? Do you have enough drive to say, hey, I'm going to come and do this and I'm going to put out everything I've got. That's all Map and I ever want from anybody that comes to any of our events. You put out and you will be rewarded. Absolutely. Is it going to be easy? No, <laughs> not even close. Even, <laughs> even, the, even, the, even the basic event. Do you like the BeastNet? Do you want to keep hearing it? Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at BeastNetPod. Touching on uh, the second part of that, the endurance event. Map and I have been brainstorming this for a couple of years now. Uh, we've been thinking about how we want to introduce this, put this together. We both have a law enforcement and military background, so that's kind of the flavor that we have. So you'll see ammo cans out there. Uh, you'll see different types of movements that you're going to learn. Uh, you're going to have packs to carry, weight to carry, all this other stuff. But there's going to be a purpose for everything you're going to be doing out there and the reason and the reason why you're doing it. So you'll learn some skills. The, the best part about this is that we want to begin your journey in endurance. So if you have no background in endurance and you just want to go out there and, and put your foot in and try it out, this is where it's at, the basic event. And that's exactly what it is. It's a basic event. We want to get you out there. We want to show you what you're capable of. We want to show you where you could work on it and build you up. Because after that, we're going to have an intermediate event and an advanced event. And then coming soon and later on down the road, we're going to have very unique events where you may find yourself doing uh, rappel techniques. You may find yourself doing, um, uh, what was the, uh, water survival techniques. Uh, we may even, we, exactly, we may even employ a shooting package where you may be shooting uh, uh, airsoft or something. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm working with- Because uh, we're in uh, California. People. Right, because we're in the Republic of California, maybe airsoft. But if we find ourselves, like, let's say, in Texas or something, there may be a portion of our event where it'd be actual live fire, because uh, my brother and I are both firearms instructors. So, again, our, our event is unique in that you'll have a lot of different internal events going on in, in the event that you'll be participating in. But at the same token, though, I can only say that we are like in other events in that you will endure. You're going to endure and you're going to have to put out the work. So definitely. So um, I don't know, uh, Matt, do you have anything else to add about that stuff? We hope to attract a lot of endurance athletes and athlete athletes alike to come out and uh, put their training to the test. So what kind of training is it? I mean, what kind of training? I mean, I, I know it's, I've known Dingo for a while. I think I've met you, Matt, but I, I know Dingo better. I've, I've met him quite a bit. So what kind of, what can someone expect in one of the endurance events? Well, to put it in a nutshell, um, we're going to test not only strength, uh, physical and endurance uh, strength that is, but also the mental uh, and emotional side of it. I mean, a lot of endurance athletes have been out there, your 24 hour events, uh, your, your, you know, your 50 Ks and so on and so forth. And so, we, we want to put a program together where you get out there, you're not only being tested physically and mentally and, and a lot of times emotionally, but putting an intelligence uh, um, aspect to it too. You're going to get a lot of problem solving. Not only will it be possibly individualized, but it'll also be teamwork. You have to work as a team to get you know, from one end to the other, or to solve a particular problem. Um, and that's what we're hoping to change, this, you know, the, the whole parameters. Both Dingo and I spent many years in the military and have law enforcement backgrounds that, you know, it's always a scenario base. They give you all the training, 
and you get out there now to put it to the test. Okay, here's the scenario. Whereas a lot of the other events, uh, OCR in particular or others, that is, it's all strength base, it's all agility, it's all speed. You learn to tactically work the event, meaning, uh, and just throwing it out there, I don't want to do that event. So I do burpees faster, so I'll do burpees so I don't have to do that. You know, it isn't a mandatory obstacle, but I'm faster doing burpees than trying to do that crazy thing. And then they move on and they've positioned themselves to do, to do better in the event. Here, you won't be able to do that because you'll have to work as a group. And that's where the key element is, working as a group. And I like that. And I like what you said earlier about the, the idea of not um, being able to skip out and do something instead. And that's an argument I've had on a lot of, you know, like you said about just doing the burpees instead of an obstacle, you know, for example, um, where I don't think that's fair. I think it's one of those, you know, do the, if you can't do it, then you shouldn't be there. So, you know, do it until, you know, that's why I've liked a lot of them where they've had the ones where you have to actually finish the obstacle rather than having that, where you can skip out of it by doing something that you've trained even harder on. Cause it's like, well, I'm going to just train really hard to be able to do this because then I can do that and skip all of them. Yeah, so, that, that, I like that. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree to an extent on that, uh, Mike. When you get uh, the 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 uh, pro athletes, if you will, and they game the game, and then you know, then uh, the event changes. Hey, you must do this, but still doesn't say that you don't. You know, you don't have to do certain things. And again, if you can skip out of it and get around it some way, shape, or form, uh, it is what it is. Uh, for me, I've always enjoyed teaching people how to overcome quote unquote said obstacle, climbing a rope, scaling a wall or whatever. And when they get that law moment of, wow, I didn't know it was all technique. I was trying to muscle it. They, you know, they, they, they come to the epiphany that they can do this. The only thing I would add, if anything was I'm, I'm excited as hell about the specialty events. Uh, you know, the, the events all together, the basic, the intermediate and advanced uh, building you on those, those platforms. Um, but the, the, the specialty ones, I, we have been brainstorming and we've come up with some crazy, it's going to be fun. Uh, so the, the, the outsider, if you will, well, maybe not the outsider, but the person looking inside, you know, well, what was it like being in the military? What was it like being in law enforcement? I mean, can you imagine doing an endurance event where at the end you have to do a room clearing or doing an event that that's, you know, 12 hours, but you're having to move over. Uh, rough terrain, carrying a, uh, you know, simulating a, a, a mortar platoon. And I, I don't know if you understand what a mortar is, but the 81 Mike Mike, that thing is a damn beast, plus the rounds, plus the base plate and, and learning to do that and having that understanding that, you know, these grunts out there in the, you know, in, in the military, they, they, they do this weekend, week out. It's no big deal to them. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about uh, getting these packages together for these people uh, that really want to come out and again, put their training to the test and step out onto the, you know, the sharp edge of endurance, if you will, because that's what we're bringing the sharp edge. I like that. I like, I like that. that. I'm going on a t-shirt. I like that. Let me write that down. All right. And now we're going to take a quick pause so we can hear from our sponsors. Does your business need first aid, AED, OSHA, flagging, or other safety training? James Safety Services is your one-stop shop. Find them on Facebook today at James Safety Services WA and ask for a quote on hosting your training needs. And we're back. That's definitely something I, I you know, it, it sounds interesting. I, I definitely want to get down there and do it. I mean, it's one of those things I've been lucky enough this year. I've done a couple events um, and the events I have done have been a military kind of based event where one of them did have live fire. Um, and I really think this is the, the evolution in a lot of ways, what you guys are doing and other people are doing of what we've all been doing. You know, most of us started out with normal running that got boring. Then we moved on to, you know, uh, uh, OCR of some sort, cause we wanted something to keep us going. And now OCRs, especially if you do the big boys, they're cookie cutter. I can go do the, do an event in Florida and go do an event with that same company in California. And it's the same event. It's just in two different locations. Yeah. where stuff you're talking about that's going to be specific that's going to be something that i could go do your event next week you know or whenever the the, the first event is well actually i think it's next month right 
Yeah. Well, but thank you. Thank you for the plug. Yeah. So our endurance event, we got eight, we have eight events coming up and that's going to be in, uh, at the end of this month, uh, January 23rd and 24th and the 30th and 31st. And so the reason why I say eight events is because we're going to have an AM event and a PM event on both days, all four days for two weekends. So uh, Map and I want to try and get as many people out there. Uh, due to COVID, we've got to keep our group small. Hence the reason why we're doing two events per day so that we get enough people to have an opportunity to come out, whether you come out in the morning or come out in the afternoon and you have an opportunity of four different days to come out and, and, and do, do, do the event. And what's nice with a lot of things like you guys talk about is doing the different types of events. It almost seems like I could do your event next weekend and then in three months go to another one of your events and it would be completely different because yeah. I mean, one, I know I've done some events with Dingo and Dingo's mind is, kind of scary sometimes so i'm guessing the two of you together probably is going to make some of those events to a point that it's going to push you dingo's always been really good when i've done events with dingo pushing you past your limit but making you feel really good about it like mm -hmm. i've done events with other people where they push you and if you can't do it or whatever you, you get to a point you get frustrated where dingo's really good at least for me it's always been he's pushed me to that point and beyond where i thought i could and then i feel amazing for what i've done well, I appreciate so, and that. I never Thanks. feel frustrated. I never, I mean, Dingo's, I, I definitely want to find a way to get down to one of your events down there in California, because I mean, it's, I've always loved doing stuff with you. So yeah. this, this is map. Uh, Mike, we'd love to have you come out anytime, buddy. You're, you're more than welcome. You too, Don. Um, and, and, and just to uh, reiterate on what you said about that process, you know, making, making sure the, the athlete is, uh, enjoying themselves, if you will, or, or getting that affirmation at the end. One of the things I like uh, about my brother uh, that I try to emulate as well is we try never to miss a teaching moment. Too many times I've been to events where I'm watching, uh, you know, the lead person doing this, whatever, and I'll see something happen and they've lost the participant. Uh, mentally, emotionally, whatever. And I'll go up and I'll talk to them and whatever, and I'll explain certain things and I'll try and lift that emotional side because I look at it like um, these athletes will be, I mean, they're doing some soul crushing uh, stuff to themselves uh, or, or by themselves, if you will, uh, that may not be soul crushing to somebody else, but for them, it's, it's, it's the end of the world. If you're able to go in there and help grab them from the abyss that for me is probably the golden ticket because um, afterwards they come to me and say, you know what, your words, uh, your actions or whatever pulled me from that moment of I'm, 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 I'm done, I'm quitting. And I think mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of the most rewarding aspects of all this and why we're, why we're getting into this is being able to, you know, like you said, uh, push people to the limits and beyond it and feel great about it afterwards than feeling like a failure because we all fail and it's important to fail because you, ne you never know what it's like to succeed and really succeed. So uh, for me, it's pulling that individual from the abyss and uh, letting you know that, hey, th there's light and uh, you're doing a fantastic job. Just keep moving forward. Absolutely. No, that, Absolutely. that, that is so true. So like I said, that's one thing with Dingo. I mean, speaking of failure, that's probably one of my biggest memories with Dingo was one of my failures. Um, it was a race in Hawaii. I failed. I DNF, only DNF I've ever had. And I was frustrated after. Um, but, you know, it's like Dingo, I talked to Dingo afterwards and he pointed out, I mean, really, I helped another person and that's what put me behind. Even though I honestly, I shouldn't even have been on that course because, well, there was a boot on my foot and my foot was broken, but I went anyway. <laughs> but I, I that's straight up endurance person. right there. That's straight. Yeah, that's endurance it, right there, buddy. Running with a boot. By, yeah. By choosing to help the guy, it put me behind to where I couldn't, I lost, you know, I, I, I didn't finish fast enough. You know, I couldn't get past one of the, the cutoff points. But it's like one of those things, it's like, you know, where I sat and talked to Dingo about it. And he pointed out, he's like, you made the decision you know, to put that person ahead of finishing the race. So really that, you know, it, it was on, you know, he made me understand that it was my choices that did it. So, and why Absolutely. I DNF and how to not do it next time. So there you go. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. To, yeah. To, uh, let me, I wanted to uh, interject on something with that, Mike, um, because this, this is my, this is my endurance failure story. And I tell it often 
and, and real, I'll make it quick, uh, as quick as I can, at least because I'm a yapper. Anyhow, my first uh, 12 hour event was with Dinko and we were Castaic. Long, very long story short, we go up the mountain, we come down the mountain and I've made the cutoff. And here comes my brother and I'm thinking to myself, freaking awesome, here he comes, here he comes. And uh, they walk out there and say, hey, uh, everyone that's in, in facing uh, the lead, you guys are done. And I was like, what? He go, and he got cut. He didn't make the time. And so I was bummed because uh, I was going on and he wasn't. So we walk, I walked over his stuff and he's like, yeah, well, you know, I, I was helping people and I was doing this and the other. And I said, I said, you know, you got to learn to learn a cutoff. You can only help so many people. And then, then you've got to finish yourself, you know? So he wasn't too distraught about it. I was. And so I said, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go on without you. And he said, no, you got to do this. You got to do this. So the next event was this big ass yoke. We brought our own wood, but basically used as a yoke with a bunch of heavy sandbags. I got maybe 125 yards and my back was killing me. And I, I was, I was like, oh man, I'm done. This is, this is horrible. I can't do this. And so I went a little bit further and then I quit. Mike, when do you think that event was over for me? When Dingo didn't make it. Yeah. When I told him I didn't want to go on without him, my mind now and my soul inside me was done. It, it, I didn't even have to pick up that weight. I was already done. And that was one of the biggest lessons I learned. And especially from, you know, being in that aspect, because we, we, been in those type of situations in the military and law enforcement that you know what hey you you know you you still got an opportunity to keep going keep going don't give in don't give in and so from that point on i realized you know what yeah nope nope now it's i'm gonna i'm gonna finish this because he didn't finish and one it's bragging rights later on as well but what <laughs> but yeah that that was my uh endurance failure and and i i learned from it i was like you know what you 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 know, you need to uh, practice what you preach. And yeah. uh, boy, it hit me hard on that one. But uh, no doubt, I finished a 12 hour, my first 12 hour event under uh, Kewl Chaw. And uh, if I ever see a uh, ab roller again in my life, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to set it on fire. <laughs> That's the fun. You know, it's funny. You know, it's funny, uh, Mike. And uh, here's the best part is that um, I too, had been traumatized by Kewl Cha and the ab roller. So that's what's, that's what's so funny in that my 12 hour events, the three that I've completed were all under Kewl Cha, uh, an amazing uh, uh, endurance leader, uh, just a great yeah. guy. But anyway, learning those things in those types of events is, is amazing. I mean, just little nuggets that you pick up as far as how to endure, what to think, go to your happy place, or, you know, I love living in my dark space or whatever it is that gets you through. One, one of the things that I find unique uh, with MAP and I is that we are not special forces guys. We're not Navy SEALs. We're not these high speed guys, uh, you know, uh, that help lead other endurance events or, or promote other endurance events or work with other endurance events. We're just two regular guys that spent our time in the military because we chose to serve and it's part of what we do. But in, by in doing that, we, we found our niche in that, you know, we have figured out um, that we, we were actually bigger than, the sum of our parts as far as we're little guys. We're not like, I mean, hell on a good day, uh, about six months ago, I weighed 151 pounds. Holy shit. 151. That's a chunky monkey. <laughs> in my entire life. And you two guys are probably thinking, I haven't weighed 151 since I was seven. I get it. But us, it's just it's high school. Just, it's genetics, right? High school. <laughs> it's just genetics. So whenever I do tell you that my brother and I, when we step into the arena, and we're now participants in whatever endurance events that we, we have done in the past. Nine times out of 10, we're the smallest guys there, but we're putting it all out there. And mm -hmm. what I do like is that our background tends to lead, uh, lend to that in that we, we know how to endure. We know how to suffer. Uh, we just do it smartly and we do it efficiently because 
you know, our body types lend to things are a little bit more heavier, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, you may carry a 45 pound pack and we may carry a 45 pound pack, but you're putting, you know, 150 plus underneath it where we're putting, you know, 130, 145 underneath it, a little bit different. So, uh, absolutely. So we, we want to take all that knowledge and we want to take all those experiences that we've had, uh, uh, the, together and separately in different events that him and I have uh, participated in. And we want to go ahead and impart that on a lot of people that are just, like we said, on the fence, never been an endurance event. On the fence as far as, you know, what would it be like? You know, how is it like? You know, I've never been in the military. I've never been in law enforcement, like, like Mab said. We want to give you that little bit of flavor. Is it realistic? Possibly not. Maybe so but we will give you a taste of what it could be like, what, it, what you're looking at and, and test you mentally, physically, and uh, have you come out and have a great time. The biggest thing for us is to go ahead and make sure that you come out, you work hard, you meet some good people, you meet all the other crazies that are this doing this endurance stuff, which you know all of us here know uh, there's a whole community out there. And uh, we're hoping to just add our, add our flavor, add our drop to the bucket and, uh, and have a great time doing it. Definitely. If I can just add on to that, you know, we're not making Marines, we're not making soldiers and we're not making airmen Navy. And, you know, we're, we're, we're not, we're not building special operations people or anything like that. Yeah. It's I not mean, a boot camp. It's yeah, not it's, a boot it's camp. Not, it's not a boot camp. You know, we're not there to scream at you and knife hand you in the face. It, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, but what we would like to do, and as uh, Dingo said, it, it, it will probably have a, uh, uh, for lack of a better phrase, a tactical flavor to it. Um, you're going to learn movement. You're going to learn how to carry things. We're going we're gonna to teach you what we learned, how to, carry, how to carry a pack. I was surprised that people didn't know how to really carry a pack. And here's the next thing. I, I, was, I was surprised that people really didn't know how to tie up a sandbag. Are you kidding? And so I was like, okay. Yeah, this next 10 minutes is on to teach you, teach you how to, to tie a, tam, a damn sandbag and uh, get it done so it doesn't fall apart you fall apart on you. Um, I want to backtrack just a moment, and I would be remiss, and I'm sure uh, Dingo agrees. I want to uh, do definitely a shout out to uh, Stephen Cook, Cookie. Uh, please forgive me for the life of me. Your, your, your name fell off my brain a moment ago when I gave that, uh, endurance failure, it was a uh, cookie and Chaw's event at Castaic Lake that, that, uh, these guys put on a phenomenal, these guys are the Batman and Robin of endurance. These guys, they come up with some strange and diabolical, um, deeds, if you will, for endurance. In case you're wondering, uh, Chaw's Batman and cookies, Robin. Yes, I believe that's that's how it rolls. But Don anyway, laughed at that one. He knew what I was doing. He knew what definitely, I uh, he knew what I did there. Yeah, Don de laughed. Definitely a, a shout out to both of them. And the last thing I was going to mention was just to uh, add on to what Dingo was saying. Personally, uh, map. It's so strange for me when I'm around people. I don't feel small. I don't feel short. You know, holding conversations with one. It's so strange. It only hits me when I see myself in pictures. It's the strangest thing. I'm like, who the hell's kid is that? Uh, and it's so funny to me. Um, and and, and uh, so it, it, it lends to what Dingo was saying. When we are out, when we step on the field, we are probably the hardest working athletes because we have a height and size deficit um, to work with. So yeah, we're looking at slinging heavy weight, carrying heavy weight and doing the deed because when we get out there, you know, we, we are the man in the arena and, and it's, it's, it's a little harder, uh, not being 220 pounds and to be able to, you know, push over a Jeep, uh, if you will. But yeah, I've never, it's the strangest thing to me though. When I see myself in pictures, I'm like, holy crap, I'm that, I look that, holy man, I need to get some stilts or something. There's a platform fucking boots. Um, but it, 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 to me, it is the strangest thing. You know, um, I, well, I think what I say uh, for Dingo and I, when we step up, we have a command presence and um, our personalities are about six feet tall. Six one, at least. <laughs> okay, six one. I could say I gotta get I gotta get something out of that. So your events, I mean, they, they sound like they're gonna be a blast. Um, where are they at? They're down in California, correct? So if, if I'll, I'll throw that in there. So what we're doing now is we're just started. So this is our inaugural year. 
2021. Everybody's been cooped up for a year. Uh, we're living the COVID age, so everybody's kind of got an idea what you can do, what you can't do. 12 so monkeys, not, baby. 12 monkeys. 12 monkeys, baby. So everybody, monkeys. right? Everybody everybody knows what they got to do, what they can't do, and stuff like that. So you kind of got a, an idea. So you, you shouldn't be too nervous. We have explained in, in on, on our on our uh, Facebook page and our event page on you know, we're utilizing uh, COVID protocols. There'll be questions asked when you get to the event. You know, have you been in contact? Do you have a cold? We'll do the do the measure, do the temperature check, and all that good stuff. But um, to answer your question, uh, we are going to we are right now in the process of looking for other locations to do events. And mm -hmm. the way we thought about it was, Matt lives in San Diego, the San Diego area. I'm up here near uh, Santa Barbara in between LA County and Santa Barbara County. And so we want to go North. So we're coming to your place, Mikey. Hell to, yeah. We, you got enough room in your backyard, yeah. brother. We'll go and do an event in your backyard. We're breaking I will windows. Endurance, oh, I will yeah. endurance the hell out of you in your own backyard. There you go, man. We will break well, sweet sets. Fun. So um, we're, we're, we're in the stages of setting that up. So uh, bear with us. We're technologically a little bit uh, on the slow side. So I've got some people in the background that are helping us out, putting up, put together our website. Uh, so with that being said, you can find us on Facebook, uh, the endurance event on Facebook, Instagram. It's the endurance event. Look that up. You can't miss it. Uh, if you can't find it for some reason on that hit Dingo and I up on, on our, on our Instagram and Facebook. You are Dingo. Dingo Dominguez or Map Dominguez. Not hard to find. Our email address is theenduranceevent at gmail.com until we get actually professional and maybe, you know, dot event or something like that. So uh, again, uh, Instagram and Facebook at the endurance event. And then uh, for um, email, it's uh, the endurance event at gmail.com. Uh, we are going to put together a website. We'll start filling in uh, so our, as soon as we get locations and places firmed up. Uh, we're looking at heading up toward Gilroy and uh, San Jose sometime in March, February. I'm not sure where we may be. Uh, right now, we're looking at either doing the two last weekends of every month or starting in February, it would be probably the second and uh, second and uh, or I should say the second and fourth weekend of every month. So we want to split it up. We're trying because we have to uh, keep our groups small because of the COVID mm -hmm. thing. We're trying to set it up to give as many people the opportunity to come out with as many events as possible. So again, whether we get four people to an event or our maximum is 20 per event, that's 10 people for me, 10 people for MAP. That way we don't get in trouble, especially in California like for having large crowds. We don't care if we get four people per event, that's all right. For us, is we're just trying to get the word out to build these up so that you have an opportunity to come to any one of these events. If you miss a weekend, you're probably going to be able to pick it up two weeks later or the following weekend, and you're going to have four more uh, chances to be able to get out there. We're willing to put our time in for you to come out and, well, for lack of better terms, put your training to the test, plain and simple. Yeah, that's, that's why is having the, uh, two leaders with 10 each because uh, Washington, the new regulation is going to be 10 ticketed persons per event. So if each of you are an event, we can host 20 people just fine up here. Hell yep. yeah. So, yeah. So we thought about that and how we set it up. And again, you know, we're not trying to push, Oh, we need 500 people to show up. No, we want to have it um, large enough to where we get a good group and that's fine. But intimate enough so that one map and I can work with you guys and, 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 and push a good event onto you and, and have a great time at the same token, you'll get the absolute best out of it. If that makes sense. Yeah. We'll have to find somewhere. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we also put that out on Facebook and again, here we'll say it again. Uh, if you want us to come up and put on an event for you, we will absolutely do that. We just, uh, we just have a little prerequisite as far as what kind of location we need, uh, what kind of an open space or however it is. And um, you could email us at uh, the endurance event um, at gmail.com. 
and just ask us, hey, you know, would you be willing to come up here? We got this park or we have this trail area or we have this ranch, whatever it may be. And we'll go ahead and let you know, you know, what kind of requirements we may need, set it all up, get it going. And we'll, we'll come up and bring all our gear up with us and, and have an event. Absolutely. So th this has been great because you guys did all the talking, made my job so much easier. <laughs> You're fired, Don. <laughs> <laughs> But most of, most of my stuff's all post-production. Any closing thoughts that you guys want to send out there? Um, reasons uh, people should come. We've kind of gone over that quite a bit. So um, any closing thoughts, guys? Well, well, if you don't mind, Dingo, uh, what I would say is don't let tomorrow keep coming on you. Um, get out there. Uh, make your life extraordinary. You know, you, you, you know. Living, you know, life is not a spectator sport. You, you know, you've, you've got to get into it. So if you're feeling that you're on the fence, where it just pull the trigger, get out. Hell, it doesn't even have to be our event. Find something, get out there. Cause you're never going to know unless you do it. And that's the biggest thing. We'd love for you to come out to our event though. Cause I promise you, you, you know, you're going to get something out of it for sure. Uh, Dingo and I are, are ready to, to help elevate your training if anything and get you on that endurance journey uh because i mean you know a couple years back did i ever think i was going to be running around iceland for 24 hours hell no <laughs> do i regret it hell yes will i forever remember it hell yes most amazing horrible time ever but it was awesome thanks for listening to the beast net podcast if you haven't done it yet Find us on Facebook, like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.